The origin is a key aspect of the Superman mythos, a lone child sent from a dying planet who now defends his adopted home. This origin has been emulated, such as with Goku from Akira Toriyama's Dragon Ball, and parodied in other medias due to its iconic nature. While the basic facts of this origin are always included, the dying planet and a child being sent away, it's the culture of the dying planet that is frequently neglected. With Dragon Ball, you have the warrior Saiyan race who live to fight, who saved Goku, a Saiyan living on Earth who is desperate to fight stronger and stronger foes. With Superman, however, you have a technologically superior society that praises science above all else, who saved Kal-El, a Kryptonian living on Earth who wears nothing but a skin-tight costume, a cape, and boots, with the goal of using kindness and decency to protect people. While the character, like Goku, embodies his homeworld's philosophies, Superman stands apart from his culture, and through his technological villains, has even pointed out the flaws in Kryptonian society. This paper will explore Superman's technological villains, and how Superman's own goodness and humanity has shined through during these conflicts, a contrast to Superman's own technological homeworld. Superman's homeworld of Krypton is portrayed as a culture built and driven by science, as shown in both 1986's The Man of Steel and 1987's The World of Krypton, Krypton is portrayed as clean, sterile, and primarily led by logic rather than feeling. Despite Krypton's reliance on their superior intelligence, they are victims of their own hubris and unable to save their planet. At the point of Superman's birth, children are not born naturally, but are instead grown in an external gestation matrix, ensuring that a Kryptonian is surrounded and immersed by the technological processes of Krypton before they are born. The technological and intellectual superiority of Krypton is held in such high regard that upon seeing images of farmers on Earth, Lara is horrified by their manual labour, stating, What kind of hell do you seek to send our child into? Despite Lara's objections, Kal-El is sent away from Krypton and grows up on Earth, specifically the town of Smallville in Kansas. Renamed Clark Kent and raised by Jonathan and Martha, Clark grows up on a small farm and learns the value of real hard work, that doing something with the best ability doesn't always mean the job is done well. As stated by Graydon and Brownie, Clark dons a red and blue costume originally modelled on Circus Strongman, emblematic of raw strength. Despite his otherworldly abilities such as flight, super strength and heat vision, his skin-tight costume and a lack of a mask shows to the world that he has nothing to hide and is authentically himself. While his homeworld was one of technological advancements, Clark relies only on himself, and most importantly, his kindness to change the world. His kindness in particular is something that goes to show those around him that despite his immense abilities, ordinary people are capable of extraordinary things. However, there are many villains in the Superman mythos that reflect the values of Kryptonian culture, ones who use technology for selfish gains to the detriment of others. Three such characters that will be discussed here are Lex Luthor, Cyborg Superman, and Metallo. Born and raised in the same town as Clark Kent, Lex Luthor grew up as an outcast, someone who valued intellect above brute strength, and saw themselves as superior due to this. Some stories, such as Superman Birthright, show Clark and Lex being somewhat friendly, that Lex still views himself as the superior being. Lex, ex Lex expresses that many people fear him due to his intellect, a fact that spurs him to use his knowledge to prove his superiority growing up. In modern day Metropolis, Lex views Superman as a threat, especially considering Superman's abilities are completely natural to him. Unlike Lex, he thinks that Superman does not have to work for his abilities, which encourages Lex to invent technologies to compete and defend his perceived greatness. This leads to one of Lex's most iconic technological creations, the Warsuit. Luther's Warsuit was introduced in 1983's Action Comics No. 544, 17 years after the Hardy Man exoskeleton proposal. The Hardy Man was the product of a joint venture between the US Army, US Navy, and General Electric, a piece of equipment that would have been worn like an outer garment to augment a man's ability to lift and move heavy objects. The overall goal of this exoskeleton suit, according to Pedersen and Mirrells, is to augment the entire body in terms of physical strength, adding muscular capacities, speed, e.g. run fast or fly, or heighten abilities to communicate across digital connections from within the suit. Luther's own war suit takes the proposed Hardy Man armor 
and progresses it to a working and predominantly man-made tool in order to use his perceived mental superiority to combat Superman's physical strength. In doing so, Luther is engaging in Marshall McLuhan's principles of the extension of man, the concept that technology can be used to extend man's reach. Writing in 1964, McLaurin discusses weaponry, stating that the arrow is an extension of the hand and the arm, the rifle is an extension of the eyes and teeth. With that in mind, Luther's war suit can be seen as a complete expansion of himself, and most importantly to him, his brain. That any of Luther's technological advancements, and particularly weapons, are a succession of humanity, are a success of humanity over alien forms. In the Rebirth era of DC, we see Luther not only as a hero, but one who is attempting to take up Superman's mantle after the death of the New 52 incarnation. Luther continues to use a war suit to carry out supposedly heroic duties, resembling Marvel's Iron Man, but the costume incorporates Superman's emblem as a central piece of iconography. However, Luther always finds himself returning to a villain's role, using the same war suit he could have used for heroism as a tool for his own benefit. Unlike the character of Steel, Lex's abuse of technology for personal benefit does not stand up to the ideologies embodied by Superman's emblem. In 2023's Superman No. 7, Luther confides in Lois Lane a reason why he hates Superman, in particular when it comes to his own idea of personal heroism. From the day we met, Superman has shown me compassion, but when he showed up in Metropolis, I rejected him, because he rejected me. Superman revealed my weaknesses over and over again, and it wasn't a chink in my armor or a flaw in my design, or a piece of my plan that I didn't calculate for. It was me. I've tried to be a hero, and instead I made enemies. I thought to be a hero, you had to sacrifice. You had to give away a piece of yourself. But Superman showed me I was wrong. Superman's kindness exists despite immense power. Lex states that he views heroism as needing to sacrifice something, a situation that Lex is not comfortable putting himself in as it shows an inner weakness. Superman shows to Lex that kindness doesn't need to come at the expense of the self. Unlike Krypton, technological breakthroughs are not something that define your work. Instead, it's the potential of one's character that shines through that technology. Luther represents a man misusing technology in an attempt to prove their own superiority. When compared to a character like Steel, you can see how the underlying principles of a person in the armor affects the perception of the character. However, Luther is far from the most technologically monstrous villain in Superman's mythos. Originally a man named Henry Henshaw, the cyborg Superman was a victim of a shuttlecraft explosion that left him with deadly cosmic radiation. Henshaw began to rapidly decay, and he downloads his consciousness into a LexCorp mainframe and builds himself a robotic form. After using NASA technology, Henshaw merges himself with the Kryptonian birthing matrix, creating the cyborg Superman. The experience and fusion of human and Kryptonian technology drives Henshaw to the brink of madness, in which he now blames everything on Superman. Cyborg Superman is a literal mechanical monster, born of corrupted Kryptonian technology wielding immense power and with the appearance of a trusted hero. This is something Cyborg Superman takes advantage of in the Death and Return of Superman storyline, impersonating the recently deceased Superman in order to gain the public's trust. In the 2020s, Cyborg Superman has come to represent the worst of Kryptonian society, and in particular, the technological fears of the surviving Kryptonians. During 2024's Night Terror event, the Action Comics tie-in comics portray personal nightmares from the perspective of both Power Girl and Superman's adopted family, including Othel Ra, Osul Ra, and Connor Kent. With Power Girl, her nightmare includes a robotic entity telling her that she is unworthy of love and is hated for existing. When trying to escape, she has visions of herself as a robot, and is even thrown away by Superman due to having a major defect. This nightmare Superman even comments on her replaceability. Much like her counterpart Supergirl, Power Girl remembers life on Krypton, and the technological-driven society that praised innovation over individuality. With her own experience of having another version of herself walking around, the concept of technological erasure of individuality. With Superman's adopted family, their nightmare revolves around Cyborg Superman himself, taking place just after Cyborg Superman has caused mayhem in the main action comics title. The nightmare primarily centers around Othel and Olsol's fear that Cyborg Superman would use that technology to return and destroy them. This culminates in a nightmare turning Connor into cybernetic monstrosity that is hellbent on destroying the group from the inside out. From the action comics Night Terror's tie-in issues, 
we see an ongoing theme of remaining Kryptonians and theologians fearing technology, particularly the idea of technology consuming and corrupting a person to use their power in opposition to their ideals. The idea is encapsulated in Cyborg Superman, an other who encapsulates destruction, corruption, and technological superiority, complete with the deceiving and familiar face of Superman. Also on Orthol eventually put a stop to the nightmare Cyborg Superman by admitting to themselves that he is just as emotionally frail as they are, that despite all his powers and technological advancement, despite his appearance resembling Superman, Henry Henshaw is just a person, one who is terrified of dying, misses his wife, and turns all his anger and fear into a reason to lash out at the world. Similar to Cyborg Superman, another villain within the Superman titles also uses technological augmentation, but with a different outcome, and in recent years, an outcome adopting Superman's mindset. During the Kal-El Returns storyline from 2023, the story frequently cuts away to a sad, broken robotic body locked away in a maximum security prison. Despite visits from his loving sister, this being wants to be left alone to rust. This is Metallo, once a man named John Corbin. John grew up in a difficult situation. Raised by an abusive father and alongside his younger sister Tracy, John eventually kills his father while trying to protect Tracy. John later finds himself involved with the military, Lex Luthor and John Henry Irons, to create Project Steel Soldier. Outfitted in a large exoskeleton, much like Luthor's own warsuit, Corbin is overtaken by Brainiac, while his heart is crushed in the process. As time goes on, his heart is replaced with kryptonite, his body becomes more and more cybernetic, and his demeanour becomes far more violent and ruthless. The less he resembles a human, the more he gives in to violent tendencies. Metallo views his own cybernetic augmentation as something that excludes him from humanity. In Action Comics 1054, Metallo refers to himself as monstrous and struggles to reconcile with his human origin. When compared to Superman, someone who appears human but is biologically superior, he argues that his own actions are Superman's fault. This is your fault. You're no hero. Nothing like us ever could be. No living thing's supposed to have power like this. Don't you know that? No matter that good guy act you put on, how pretty your stupid face is, how many people cry for you to save them, you're just as much a monster as me. This echoes a number of comments Lex Luthor and Cyborg Superman make about Superman, primarily that an alien couldn't be anything other than a monster and an outsider. However, Superman's home humanity doesn't view these people as less than human, though despite their technological otherness, he sees their core decency and value despite that. When fighting drones created by Metallo and Cyborg Superman, technologically converted and violent people, Superman asks Keenan, the Chinese Superman, to take an injured drone to the hospital. Keenan initially protests this, commenting that these are monsters who almost killed Steel and Supergirl. Questioning why they should help them, Superman's response speaks to his own philosophy in terms of humanity, because if he dies, Keenan, he can never make it right. If he dies, this is the best he will ever be. Saving him is how we save the world. Metallo does understand this mindset, as during the story arc we see his sister become forcibly turned into the same mechanical being as he is. This is an act that horrifies Corbin, and one that reveals his own sense of morality. As Superman says, by carrying on and helping the heroes, Metallo has a chance to help make things right. As the story concludes, we see Corbin in a much more human-looking body, as he comforts his sister. Tracy is struggling with her new body. It may be identical to a human form, but she knows the difference. I can't live in this thing. I can't feel my… my anything. I never get hot, or cold, or… I'm a monster now, Johnny. Like you. Corbin takes a moment before responding, clearly reflecting on his time with Superman. In the end, he gives her one last comment that sums up the real truth of technological advancement in the Superman books. Listen, Trace. Whatever's in me has been there since we were kids. It wasn't the kryptonite or the metal parts. It got me a long time ago. You're not like me. You're more like Superman. Or those two kids. One of the good guys. And this monster ain't going anywhere. With the technological villains of Superman, we see a trend in technological augmentations being used to lash out at the world and to provide their own superiority. Superman's homeworld in particular praised technological achievements above all else. As an added note, and one that would require its own paper at this point, Brainiac very much embodies the philosophies of Kryptonian culture. In some canons, he is even involved with the downfall of Krypton, such as with Superman the Animated Series. In the recent House of Brainiac storyline, we even see Brainiac as a counterpart to Jor-El in Superman's origin, where he used his own form of Matrix to birth a new life form. We can clearly see a continuation of technology and technological supervillains acting as a parallel to Superman. Lex Luthor as a Kansas native using his abilities, e.g. his brain, but is utterly self-absorbed. 
Cyborg Superman as someone who takes the face and symbol of Superman, but shows the dark side of technological obsession. And Metallo, someone born from tragedy, but finds his powered form to be a burden and self-identifies as a monster. But with Superman himself, we see neither a prejudice against technology nor a complete embracement. Instead, his compassion shines through, encouraging those that misuse technology to better understand themselves and use that technology to make the future brighter. Superman may be an alien from another world, but by being his authentic self, he continues to have faith in humanity and lead the way through kindness. Hey, I hope you're all doing okay. Um, it's been a while since I talked to any of you. Um, my health got a lot worse, so a lot of my time is spent resting. Um, but my work's going all right. I'm now a full-time lecturer, which is pretty cool. Since we last spoke, I got a kitten. Her name is Fenna, or Fen. Um, there's no replacing Jones, but Fen has been a very fun addition to the house. And she even got her name in the Green Lantern War Journal comics. So the Dark Star of Fen takes its name from my kitten, Fen. Um, I hope to talk to you all soon. See you later. Have a good day.